So today I've found a bit of spare time and I've decided to start putting this three phase motor back together. I'll probably start with the um, refurbishing the center part of the motor. Then I'll do the two outsides and then I'll have a look at the rotor and the bearings, get them sorted and reassemble the whole thing back together and then slide the pulley on last. So. Yeah, most of this motor's just got dirt on it. There's a um, small little mouse nest up in here. Well, the start of one anyway. So something I noticed when I was vacuuming, there's actually um, these wires here that wrap around the stator, and one of them's actually broken. Yeah. And got me quite worried but uh, when I looked at it closer these wires here they aren't really um, current carrying wires as the a real fine uh, braid looks a bit like a wire actually used to hold the stator together when they were um, assembling the motor so I traced the wire around and yeah, it basically is to hold these um, out of solid core copper wires together of the stator and it's tied in a knot here at the end. So now that I've got the brush and um, brushed all the dirt out of the internal parts of the motor uh, and cleaned all the windings on the stator, I think I'll move on to the outside. We're all um, hit this with a wire wheel. Now that I've wire wheeled the entire motor down. You can see that it's come up pretty nice. Um, you can see where the old nameplate was up here. The two rivets here and there's a rivet here and a hole for another rivet over here. But it seems to be missing now so not sure what was written on that. But this section of the motor is basically complete for the restoration. I would like to get paint here on the insides of the motor. Cleaning the, the metal off is going to be more the problem uh, there, but I think it'll be right. I mean, it's gone 70 years like it is, and it seems to be in reasonably good condition. I'll probably paint the outside of this motor once the entire motor is assembled back together, um, just so I don't miss any parts or the paint actually doesn't get in the way because this is a bit of a tight fit to the end cap so and I'm, and I'm not sure how this mate so I want to make sure I get a complete coverage so I'll probably leave that till it's fully assembled and um, yeah so move on to the next part So the next part of the restoration of this motor, I'll be working on the end caps. Um, they mostly just need cleaning up. Um, I'll probably take this. Uh, looks like a, a little guard on there to help the wind circulate when the rotor's spinning. Uh, it's on both ends. So I think the idea of it is is to stop debris coming in, but also to hold the air circulate throughout the motor wall. That's my theory anyway. Um, I'll probably pull that apart, give it all a vacuum down, and then I'll clean out all the um, bearing surfaces in the end caps, 
and then I'll um, have a look at what needs painting and So we've got all the dust vacuumed out now. Um, just having a look at these end caps, it looks like looks like the original paint is still in pretty good condition. So um, good dark maroney red throughout the end of these end caps. So probably end up just cleaning up these um, guards here and giving them a quick spray, probably just a flat black or whatever I have in the cupboard. May even have another red that might match in the cupboard. And then I'll get these, um, yeah, all cleaned up and I'll paint the outsides when it's all assembled together again. So I've given all the end caps a while wheel over now. Um, they still need cleaning down in a few of the crevices. I'll get that with a hand wire brush. And I've also cleaned up these um, dust guards. And I'll probably put a coat of paint on these and uh, let that dry while I'm cleaning up the end caps and the rotor. So I'll go and do that. And once all the components are clean and um, these are being painted we can assemble it back together and put the final coat of paint on So I got halfway through painting these um, guards black and then I realised I'd run out of black paint so I switched over to this uh, charcoal paint I think I've got a bit uh, four or five cans of this touch up paint and I actually prefer this colour because I think it'll go better with the maroon that's already in the motor but so that's now changed 
but that's all done now so we can move on and get the other part of the motor all the rotor cleaned up and um, all the bearings cleaned up and prepped and then we can put the motor back together and um, prep up and paint the outside of the motor so moving on So I've got the rotor up on the bench now, I'm just having a quick look over it. Basically you've got the squirrel cage, um, it's got some cooling fins on the side, keep all the air circulating around, and then we've got the two bearing cups on the end, um, and that the bearings attached to the shaft, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the bearings, I think I'll probably just leave them as is, um, hopefully there hasn't got any dust or particles, they all spin and it's been pretty freely with no real loud noises um, and there's no movement on either end of the cup so I honestly think they're still in pretty good condition but I'm going to take down the, the numbers so if I do have a problem in the future I can cross reference them and pull it down and reinstall it um, but I'll probably just end up giving this rotor a clean up with a, a soft brush and um, remove some of this grease here and then I'll um, yeah, install that back into the motor and re-grease them and pack them once all the motors assembled back together through the um, little grease nipples that go on the end of these little um, end plates. So, yeah. I've given all the rotor a clean up now. I've got majority of the dust off it. It's not exactly in um well it's not super clean but I've got most of the bulk dust off it. It's gonna get dusty again because the end caps actually exposed. Well, there's holes in it, so the rotor's actually exposed um to allow the motor to breathe. But I've also taken off the excess grease down at the bearing, end of the bearings here because I'll get filled up again once I assemble the motor back together and um, re-put grease in the, in the end caps um, so basically now I'll just have to assemble it all together and um, prep the outside for paint so it's all coming together pretty good so far um, notice the bearings are made by New Departure um, and made in the USA as well so I don't know how common that is with the newer motors I'll say most of the new motors made today have got Japanese bearings in it um, these ones still seem in good condition so obviously serve their purpose over the years unless they've been reconditioned but I've got a feeling that these might actually be the original bearings that come with the motor so, it's interesting.
So I think we've got the rotor in the motor now. Um, I'll just have to line up the bearing cup on the other side and put the four screws in and that should have all the far side of the rotor secured. Just as I was putting the final screws in, um, the card went full, so I've changed cards now. And you can see that I've got the motor all completely together. Um, yeah, it's came together quite nice, actually. I had a bit of trouble with this uh, end cap here. The inner bearing um, cup or holder, whatever you'd call it, wouldn't quite align with um, the surface in there. So I had to put these four outer bolts in and then... Um, We'll put pressure on them and then I had to put these four threaded screws that secure the cup. I had to put them in and slowly wind the four outer bolts in and then I'd wind the inner bolts in and that sucked it all together and um, the motor spins pretty free. So there's nothing inside that seems to be bound or causing problems. Um, so basically it just needs the um, grease nipple and the the plug um, inserted into each of the end caps and then I'll put the um, shred on around the wires I'll probably end up putting a new connection on all these wires because I just cut it off the lathe so that'll be pretty straightforward to do and then I'll prep it up and paint it so when I get a chance that'll be the next thing I'll be doing seems to be coming together pretty good um, it's a lot bigger motor than I Remembered I had a, I've had it pulled apart for a while now, so getting it all back together is a um, pretty good feeling uh, I've got a few numbers off the inside of the casting that I might be able to use to do a bit of research on the internet And um, see if I can find any information about this motor and It'd be nice to get a nameplate back on this motor, but I don't know if that's possible. It's fairly old